a slightly different twist on northern Nevada with celebrities, unique newsmakers, fun events, and great stories that affect your life. If it's going on in our area, it's on Reno 411 with your host, Dave Lawrence. Well, you've probably heard the phrase, you are what you eat. Food, of course, so important to our lives and eating healthy is critical. So we have Dr. Brad Bongiovanni here. You are a nutritional, psych you practice nutritional psychiatry. Nutritional psychiatry, okay. Talk yes. about what that is. Well, Brooke Shields, Mel Gibson, even Catherine Zeta-Jones, one in three Americans suffers from a mental health disorder. Nutritional psychiatry is really just the simple concept that what we eat directly affects the function and structure of our brain and our mood. So let's go into a little bit of detail in layman's terms how the chemistry of that works. Yes, yeah, so basically foods are rich in all sorts of phytochemicals, vitamins, minerals, nutrients. And so today what I want to talk to you about is how can we use some specific foods to help regulate and improve our mood. And you're talking these foods can actually replace um, medications. They can. Uh, to use to treat uh, things like depression. Correct. So I commonly help people come off medications or avoid medications just by helping them learn what to eat and how to feed their brain better. All right, let's go into it. Okay, so example, sardines. Sardines are anchovies, um, sardines, trout, salmon, rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Our brain is full of fat, so we have mm -hmm. to feed it good, healthy fats. And in place of things like Cymbalta or Effexor, we can still eat yummy foods like avocados. Avocados are rich in B vitamins as well as healthy fats for our brain. Um, kale. Kale is another great example of dark green leafy vegetables, very, very nutrient dense, colorful, tasty, full of minerals and B vitamins that literally our brain needs to build brain chemicals in the first place. So how are these vitamins and omegas uh, affecting moods and uh, people's mental health? Yes. Well, you, you can't build a brain chemical that regulates mood like serotonin without starting with nutrients. Tryptophan, B3, B6, magnesium, folic acid, it can't happen. So where do we get all those nutrients? Food. I mean, it seems like such a simple concept, but we're conditioned in the society to uh, start taking medications. Do you see people embracing this idea? Yes. One in six Americans, this came out two weeks ago, are taking psychiatric medications. But they're really, people are, are, are scared. Um, they're, they don't like the side effects. So they are seeking out more alternative cures. And nothing should be started before you start with food. So... How do you go about this? Is this something you can research online or should you be consulting a physician? No, you should be consulting a functional medicine physician who's trained in diet and lifestyle medicine. So can I give you an example about lemons? I love examples. Okay. Not only if you scratch and sniff the outside of lemon, it smells fantastic. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So lemons are actually mood elevating the smell, but inside lemons are lithium, nutritional amounts of lithium, which helps balance moods out. Seaweed, potatoes, eggs are also great sources of natural lithium. So how do you start building your diet to include these foods and knowing your uh, mental well-being? Um, you start with the basics and you start with as many baby steps as you need. So you really want to just start eating real, whole foods first. If you do nothing else other than that, just start eating real foods in their God-given state, you're going to take your health from zero to 50 immediately. I mean, you've heard so often that, you know, when people eat a lot of junk food or a lot of processed food, they do start to feel more lethargic, depressed. Yes. Um, is that just because their lifestyle and their habits are kind of, um, they are unhealthy a little bit. And when you're eating all of those processed, chemically laden, sugar laden foods, it, they're very, very inflammatory. And inflammation internally is a huge stress factor, not just on our body, our gut, our joints and muscles, but our brain too. Mm -hmm. And you've uh, spoken extensively about this and you've written a book as well. Yes, I was invited to Harvard last summer to speak about this and I have a book called Why Am I Depressed and How Can I Overcome It? Are you finding that this is um, a it's kind of a thought process that's being accepted into the medical community? Yes, more and more. And there's really a lot of robust science looking at how food impacts our genes and how our genes then regulate our proteins, including brain chemistry. So there's a more and more and more science coming out about basic medicine that we were practicing 100 years ago. And, you know, this seems just like a really healthy way to start enhancing your life, trying to fix a problem before uh, using drugs as drugs should almost be a last resort. Drugs are not not, not a re drugs are not to be thought of as, as not a resort. It's just let's start with the foundation first. Exercise, food, 
sleep, stress management before we jump to a more aggressive therapy. All right. Uh, is there a place our viewers can go to learn more information? Yes, nutritionalpsychiatry.com or nutritionpsychiatry.com. You can get a free copy of my book there. And uh, I really just want viewers to know that you can really improve your mood by eating delicious foods right from your local grocery store. <laughs> well, perfect. Uh, doctor, thank you very much Thanks. for joining us here and uh, giving us all this information.